Good morning, dear students. In the last module, we had discussed about the Newton's first law of motion. During the course of which we said that the Newton's laws are elucidating the concept of the force by all by all its means, like its uh, concept, definition, its uh, quantitative understanding, as well as its qualitative occurring. We have said the first thing, the definition of the force from the first law, force is that which tends to change the state of the body. Even though the state of the body is not changing, when you apply the force because of its inertia, still the force is there. It is trying to tend to the change the force, to change the, it is trying to change the course of the condition of the body or the uh, state of the body we call it. Like for example, if a body is resting there on a sur surface like this, if you apply a force due to the greater mass, there is a greater inertia and the force you applied is not sufficient enough to move the body all right. But if you increase the force, it can probably move. But what is the force that is smaller force doing there? It is also trying to move the body, it is not happening. Yeah. So, as long as the definition of the force is concerned, as far as the definition of the force is concerned, force is that which tends to move the body. It is there, it is there, at the same time you are not able to see it because it is not creating any motion there in the body. We said there, the second law helps us in understanding the quantitative measurement of this force. That is, the second law. Second law tells us how to understand the magnitude of the force, how to estimate the magnitude of the force. The magnitude of the force can be understood only when it can generate some physical quantity there in that called momentum. There is what is called mass for a body and the body is moving with the velocity. So, this mass into velocity is the dynamic property of the body which we call it as momentum of the body. When a body is moving with constant velocity, the momentum remains constant. When you attempt to change the velocity, when the velocity changes, mass will not change, it is a constant. So, momentum changes there. So, the rate at which momentum is changing will tell you how strong is the force. That is what the second law says. The law says, the rate of change of momentum is proportional to the force. The greater the change in momentum, uh, the greater the rate of change of momentum, the uh, greater will be the force there. Rate of change of momentum means change in momentum per unit time, per second there. That is what the second law says. That is one part, the first part of the second law. The second part tells the rate of change of momentum is directly proportional to the force and takes place in the same direction as the force. The force always means here external force, remember. We will come to it in the third law, I will make it more clear there. The force means external force only. So, the external force takes place and the change of momentum also will be taking place in the same direction. That is what the second law says. In other words, there are two aspects for a force. It is a vector quantity. One is magnitude and this is direction. The law tells about both of them. The magnitude is estimated depending on the rate of change of momentum. The rate at which momentum is changing, the quantity of change in momentum per unit second. That is what the magnitude of the force would be a proportional to. Then the direction is, it will be in the same direction as the momentum. Momentum also is a vector quantity. If you take a body which is of mass m and it is moving with the velocity v, say you start with and uh, V1 I call it, we apply a force on that, continuously constant force applied on that. So, the velocity, the state of the body is changed according to Newton's first law. That means, 
state of motion, the velocity will change. Let us say it is about uh, the magnitude first we are talking. Let us say the body is uh, on surface and the force applied also is uh, parallel to the surface. So, the body moves continuously on the same surface in the same direction. But because you are applying the force, after some time the velocity will change. The velocity will now become suppose V2 after some time. It is in the same direction. Suppose to move from this point to this point, it takes a time T. Then what is Newton's law telling us here? It tells that the rate of change of momentum is proportional to the force magnitude. That means if you take the momentum of the body, initially it is M1, after some time it is becoming M, initially it is M1 V1, then it is becoming M V2, velocity has changed in the same direction. So, change means the difference between these two in the given time t there. This is what is called as change in momentum by time taken change in momentum by time taken. Suppose you take this time very small as delta t and in the limit when delta t becomes 0 that means very 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 short intervals of time you take closely there then we can call it as delta m v by delta t and we can call it as d m v by d t. We, do, we can replace the deltas with the differentiation, you know that in mathematics we discussed earlier. So, we can call it as rate of change of momentum, momentum is the quantity there. Yeah. Actually, in the differentiation here, m is mass which is a constant. So, we can write this like this also, m into dv by dt. What is dv by dt? rate of change of velocity. Rate of change of velocity is called as acceleration. So, we can write this equation as m into a, where a is the acceleration. So, it now boils down to say that the force that is applied is proportional to the mass into acceleration and the direction of the force is the same as acceleration there, both are in the same direction, vectors. So, this is what our conclusion is. To get the understanding of this itself is what is called the second law. Second law says like that. If we call it force as F, the magnitude is proportional to M into A. That is rate of change of momentum in the same direction. Now I can rub off this one. Let us try to examine that equation better. This only tells you that the more the acceleration the more will be the force, rather the more is the force, the more is the acceleration because m is constant again. So, force is proportional to the acceleration only here. In other words, acceleration is actually distributed like, like this, acceleration is proportional to the force. The greater the force you apply, the greater will be the acceleration produced there. So, this is what e Newton's second law is telling us, but it does not tell us exactly how much force will create how much acceleration. It is not telling that. You are applying a force, acceleration is some quantity say A. You double the force, acceleration also becomes double. You reduce the force to half, acceleration also becomes half. But it won't tell you absolutely what is the initial value and what is the final value that is given there unless you know the value first. That means you must make this proportionality into an equation. There must be an exact relationship between force and uh, acceleration there. How to get that? It is like this. If you put this into a constant here, we write as k into m a. F is equal to k into m a. What is k? k is a constant here, constant of proportionality. In mathematics, whenever you come across those things, we know that other things will decide. What are things with a force, mass, acceleration are there. So, they will decide what will be the value of k. In other words, mathematically speaking, k is equal to f by m a. If you know how to measure force, if you know how to measure mass and how to measure acceleration, you can measure them 
in a particular case, take the ratio, what you get is equal to k. But in this case, we are in the very first definition of the force. So, the measurement of force is not known till now. Only with this equation we are going to measure force later on. So, we have a facility here. So, we will make the units of force measurement in such a way that we can get the value of k is equal to 1. That means, if you want, if you want, I will write here like that only, if you want k is equal to 1, what should be the case? F must be equal to 1, m equal to 1, a equal to 1. That means, you must choose some unit as force equal to 1, such that one unit of mass, when it acts on that, it will create one unit of acceleration only. You can choose such a force as a standard, the equation becomes k is equal to 1 and your equation becomes simpler. That is what is chosen as a Newton. A Newton is the unit for the force. We show it like this generally while writing the symbols. What is a Newton force? One Newton force is that which while acting on a body of mass 1 kg will generate an acceleration in it equal to 1 meter per second square. Suppose you take a body of mass 1 kg and apply a force on that such that the acceleration is 1 meter per second square. That force is called as 1 Newton. If you give such unit for force, if you define the Newton like that, then the equation becomes equal to 1. That means, this is satisfied now. That means, k has become equal to 1. So, we can write it like this now. Instead of writing this way, we want and all that, we will put this way now. We can write that as, if f is equal to 1 Newton, then k is equal to 1. What is mean by f is equal to 1? It means this. It is that force which generating 1 meter per second square acceleration in a body of mass 1 kg. So, holding to this definition of Newton, can k, k becomes equal to 1 and our equation becomes f is equal to ma. If the definition of the Newton changes, if the force unit is something else different, then it won't be f is equal to ma, it will be different k will be there, some value will become to it. So, since we are now defining a new unit for the measurement of the force itself, it is so conveniently defined as a Newton, such that the equation becomes a physical dm. That is what you have to understand here in the unit. Then, What is the further uh, conclusion what we get from this equation? F is equal to ma. That means, once again coming to mass, the when a body is acted upon by a force, the acceleration produced in it will be proportional to the mass there. In a way such that the smaller the mass, the greater will be the proportion acceleration produced. In other words, acceleration is the ratio of force to mass. If you know the mass of the body, if you know the force there, you will know how much acceleration the body can be produced into. So, by measuring the force in Newton like that, you are able to assess for any body which is moving, when a force is applied on that, how the body's acceleration will change, will take place there. So, this once again, it is said it can be used vectorially also because direction is the same. Acceleration force must be in the same direction always. Because Newton's law says a force will try to generate acceleration in the same direction as the force. Now, we take the example of a body here. If there is a body on a smooth surface, you apply a force here. Then the acceleration will be in the same direction. And that acceleration is given by F by M. On the other hand, suppose you apply a force in this direction, opposite direction. 
then what happens? The acceleration also will be in this direction. Suppose the body is moving on the rough surface. Friction will take place in the opposite direction. So, friction will be a force which try to produce acceleration in the opposite direction. Therefore, we say it is retarding the motion. Retardation is produced. So, velocity goes on decreasing. If the force and acceleration are in the same direction, like in this case, you will, like in this case, anyway, you will find we call it as acceleration. Suppose you take a rough surface here, like what I said, the body is moving with acceleration in, the, in this direction and the friction is there here in this direction. Then the frictional force will be opposite to that acceleration there. So, the frictional force will try to generate acceleration in its own direction. This is different acceleration. That is different acceleration. This acceleration is due to a force acting here, F. That is due to this one. The effective acceleration, if you call it as A here, then effective acceleration A is equal to this applied force minus frictional force by the mass. That is called resultant force. So, resultant force by mass. Then the body is moving. Is it, suppose this F is greater. Naturally, the body will be moving under friction in that direction there. It will have the same direction as the resultant force. This F is there. So, this F is in the forward direction. So, acceleration also will be in the forward direction. So, you will always find the effective acceleration will be due to the effective force in that direction. So, if there is a force that is there, it, is, it need not always produce acceleration in its own direction there for us ultimately to see. The effective force must be calculated. Give another example here. Suppose there is a body like this. You are applying a force in this direction. You are applying a force in this direction. You are applying a force in this direction. Applying a force in the direction. Different forces are there now and then. This will create, it can generate an acceleration in its own direction. This will have its own way. This will have its own way. This will have its own way. In which way the body will move now? We have to account for a net force. Suppose the body is moving in this direction. So, sigma of all these forces, you know, F1 plus F2 plus F3 and F4 is giving rise to one force here, that is in that direction. That force generates acceleration in that direction. So, the body will move ultimately in that direction, this is a resultant force we call it, resultant force. So, net force or resultant force is responsible for the movement of the body with acceleration in that direction. So, we know how to combine these forces, we have discussed that in the uh, two modules earlier, how to superimpose forces. So, with that knowledge, we must be able to get the net force acting on the body, then you will know what is the direction in which the body is moving with what acceleration there. So, that is what you have to understand. That means, if you have a net force acting in that direction, it may this, this force, this acceleration also will be a vector quantity. So, you can think of components like this. Suppose there is net force acting in the direction like that, F. Then this force can have two components, one x component here, one y component here, say. We call this as F cos theta, you know this resolution vectors, F sin theta we can call it. So, this is the x component, this is the y component. Now, you see, this x component is in the x direction, it will have its own acceleration generated there. This will have y component in this direction, it will have its own acceleration generated there. So, we can write the equations like this, f is equal to ma, that acceleration is in this direction, this acceleration also will be in this direction. This force has two components, fx i plus fyj, that means like this f is equal to f cos theta i plus f sin theta j. 
that's what it means. What about acceleration now? This is m into a. So, this m into a is equal to f cos theta i plus f sin theta j. That means, a is equal to f cos theta by a in magnitude, then i, so sorry, f cos theta by m mass is here, f cos theta by m, m comes this side, plus f sin theta by m into j. What is this giving you? F by m is a. We have given this. F by m is a. So, a cos theta into i plus a sin theta into j. See now? That means, this is the x component of the acceleration and this is the y component of the acceleration. So, just like force, acceleration also follows from the same equation. So, like every component will have acceleration in its own direction, every force will have a component, every component of the force will have acceleration component in the same direction. So, x will create, this f cos theta will create a x, f sin theta will create a y. Together net acceleration will be a z. That is how the body, the, the motion of the body is to be understood. So, like this, both in magnitude and direction, we have to understand the acceleration. How to combine the forces, how to combine the accelerations, we already seen in earlier modules. With that knowledge, we can go ahead with the doing problems in this setup here. Let us take one example here, one problem we will see. What the problem says? There is a body of mass 5 kg, there is a body of mass 5 kg and a force of 25 newtons acts on that. What is the acceleration produced in the body? That is the question. Acceleration is force by mass. So, it is 25 by 5, so it is 5 meters per second square. So, as long as this force is acting, this acceleration will take place in the same direction as the force, in the same direction as F. Suppose now the force ceases to act there, so suddenly force becomes 0. What happens now when force becomes 0? Acceleration becomes 0. When the acceleration becomes 0, velocity becomes constant. The body will start moving with constant velocity. So, what will be velocity? Suppose this force acts for 5, five minutes, 5 seconds say. So, this is acts for 5 seconds suppose. That means, T is equal to 5 seconds. So, velocity after 5 seconds will be given by the equation V is equal to U plus A T. Initial velocity, suppose it is starting velocity from rest, suppose it is 0, then acceleration we have found here is 5, time taken 5 seconds, so it becomes 25 meters per second after 5 seconds. Then the force becomes 0. Then what happens? With this velocity, it will continue. So, in the next 5 seconds, in the next 5 seconds, suppose, you want to know how long it moves, how much distance it will go, we can say distance moved is equal to the velocity into time taken next. That is 25 into 5, 125 meters. So, it will travel 125 meters after the force becomes 0. It continues like that, 5 seconds there, as given problem. 
So, what do you understand from this is second law and then first law also both are involved here. The first part will tell you from the second law how to get the acceleration. The second part will tell you how to get the velocity when the force becomes zero. That is kinematics will tell you. So, once the force becomes zero, velocity becomes constant this is first law. So, from the knowledge of the first law, we get how much distance it will be traveling further in the next 5 seconds. That is how the problem is here. We will take another one. We shall take up another example here. There is a body of mass 2 kg and as force acts on the body, it is given as 4i minus 3j, that is the force. What is the acceleration produced in the body? We are asked to find out both magnitude and direction. This means this is like fx i plus f y j. Now, you can get from the idea the force has two components, one is along the x axis with the 4 units, 4 newton and another is minus 3 in the y direction, minus 3 means it is like this, minus 3 newtons there suppose, like that. We are asked to find the acceleration now. You can find out in different ways, in simple way you can put like this f is equal to m into a, therefore a is equal to f by m, f by m like that. So, this f by m means 4i minus 3j by 2, mass is 2 kg. So, you can get like this, a is equal to 2i minus 3 by 2j. You can find out the magnitude of the force here, like magnitude of the, you can find the magnitude of the acceleration here from this y component of acceleration is minus 3 by 2, x component of acceleration is 2. So, a is equal to square root of a x square plus a y square. This gives you, this as 4 minus 3 by 2 is 9 by 4 here. So, this is 16 by 4, that is 2.5, uh, sorry. Sixteen plus nine, that is twenty-five by four. So this is uh, five by two. That is two point five. So many meters per second square. You can find like this. So this can be done by this method directly taking the force, or you can calculate separately for each component of the force the acceleration, and then go ahead like that. This way also it can be it's all the same only, only thing is the way of presentation is different that is all. So, what will be direction now? The direction of acceleration if you say, we always take the angle here, suppose this is alpha, tan alpha is given by 3 by 4, this is suppose this becomes 3, that becomes alpha. So, the angle alpha there is 3 by 4. If you put the parallelogram there, you can see this becomes 3, that becomes 4, so it is 3 by 4. So, alpha is tan inverse 3 by 4. Like this, we will be able to get the magnitude and direction of the acceleration from a vector uh, equation also, if it is given in this way. It all depends upon how the problems are. You can now try to work out more problems given in your module there and get to this there. You can also understand this equation of Newton's second law. like this, suppose f is equal to ma. You must understand this equation is only capable of giving the acceleration when acceleration is produced. In other words, suppose if a is equal to 0, what does this mean? 
it does it means only force is equal to 0. Does not mean the force all the force acting on the body are separately 0. Is net force equal to 0? That you must understand. This is only net force. There is a body for example, see here. There is a force acting on this body. Due to inertia of the body, the body is not able to move. But there is a force acting here. And this force is not generating acceleration. Acceleration is 0. Because the body is not moving. It does not mean it is violating the second law here. It is because the force is not generating acceleration. We cannot use this equation in that situation. In other words, Newton's second law gives you an equation to measure the force if it produces acceleration. A force which is not producing acceleration cannot be measured by applying this equation. There may be other methods for those things. Yes, there are methods we will be seeing in later modules. You will find it later. You should understand it is not applicable here. That is what you must understand. Thank you.